channel and welcome to the part two of the video on how i cut costs and save myself some extra cash as an international student so guys if you've not seen the first part of this video i would advise for you to go back and see the first part of this video before you keep on watching this otherwise you can just continue watching this and after watching this you can go see the first part of this video i'll be linking it in the description box down below and i'll also be linking it up so guys if you just see my face for the very first time my name is jennifer confidence and i'm a 2020 erasmus mundu scholarship awardee currently in dublin city university ireland again if you've not subscribed to my channel this is the best time for you to click that subscription button down below and thank me later <laughs> you need to support the business of this baby girl okay guys so let's get straight into the video like i said in the first part of this video surviving in europe her it's not easy in a twinkle of an eye you can go broke especially as a student and especially as an international student so by all means you need to look for ways to cut down costs and save yourself some extra pounds or extra euros as an international student in the last video i talked about one to six ways i save money as an international student in this video i'll be attending to the number seven to number twelve ways i save money as an international student if this sounds like what you want to hear you need to keep watching this video the seventh way i cut costs and save myself extra money as an international student is by checking multiple vendors before i purchase anything hmm. so i see something on any um website that sells any um shipping website or whatever they call them and then i see it and like it and then I check the price. I'm like, okay, okay. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to copy the name, copy exactly, like copy the details and check other websites. I'll search on Google, check multiple websites for it, for same product and check their prices and, you know, everything, do my search. And by the time I search finish, I will narrow it down to the one that is the cheapest based on, you know, delivery fees and based on the cost of the, act the actual product cost. And at the end of the day, I'm saving myself extra money because if I have bought from, maybe I just check just one and unfortunately that one is the cost, the most expensive one. That means I'm paying extra for something I could have bought for a cheaper price. Another way, which is the eighth way I cut costs and save money as an international student is by, you know, speaking with friends, speaking with colleagues before I buy anything or I do any investment. Hey, I can't like I can't overemphasize how this has actually helped me. Like sometimes I want to buy something or I want to make an investment. I speak to friends that I know that maybe they might be in that field or might have an idea about them. Like, okay, see, I want to buy this or I want to invest in this thing. What is your advice? And then sometimes they have better better deals on maybe what I want to buy. And they are like, okay, I think you should buy this. Go for this quality. Go for this quality. Buy this. Buy this. Buy that and just like that just like that they bring better deals to me and it has helped me multiple times i can't overemphasize for me to save money and cut costs and you know baby girl is still enjoying extra extra money from here and there uh -huh. i'm back again now this one that i want to say hmm my sound phone you but I sure I don't care. It's just part of the things I do to save some extra money as an international student to cut down costs. Now, if you live in a hostel, most of the hostels, like, you know, they have maybe laundry room, one particular place, and then you get to pay anytime you want to use the washing machine or the dryer or whatever, you get to pay. Hmm. Here that I'm saying, I get to pay a little bit over five euros for one washing and one drying. Hmm. And where I come from, Nigeria, where I come from, we don't put different clothes all together and wash them. It's not possible. We don't put it together. That kind of something. So because of that, <clears throat> because of that, that would cost me, you know, washing extra time. Like I will not be spending like almost, I'll be spending 12 euros. Maybe if I want to wash white, I spent uh, five plus to wash white. If I want to wash black, I spent five plus, that kind of thing. Maybe for one week, I will be spending like 12 euros. One, one week i'll be spending 12 years that's so much money you know that uh -huh. but then what i decided i said okay hmm and since they decided to like you have to you know you have to pay because unlike glasgow where i stayed <clears throat> unlike glasgow there 
Unlike Glasgow, when I was staying in an apartment, we had all those washing machines, we didn't have to pay that kind of something. So I'm like, okay, how, how, as much as possible, how can I cut costs in terms of washing my clothes and all that? I said, okay, I'm going to use Nigerian sense. I'm going to use my village sense to ensure that I don't always waste money in that washing room. I'll be laundry, I'll be laundry, whatever it is called. It's none of my business. But then what I did is <clears throat> for every week, Anyway, so what I did is that for every week, I ensured that if I'm putting on clothes, let's say this week, all the clothes that I'm wearing would all be black. Not like all be black, but they would be dark colored clothes. They would all be dark colored clothes. So let's say for this one week or maybe two weeks or whatever, all the clothes I'm wearing would all be dark colored clothes. So that when I'm washing them, I don't have to care about maybe the color. Ah, this color will stain this one. This one will do this. And no, I ensure that I wear dark colored clothes. So I, for like one week or two weeks, I keep on wearing my different dark colored clothes. And I put them together. When it's time for me to wash them, I put them together and I go and wash. And then the next time, I, I would now start wearing all my white colored clothes, my different light colored clothes and all that. Wear them finish. After wearing the finish, that's when I want to pack them together to go, you know, wash. Because if I say I want to wear white today, black tomorrow, white today, black tomorrow, at the end of every week, I'll end up spending about 12 euros to wash. Because I, as in Nigerians, we don't put black and white together to wash. Uh -uh, it's not possible. They're not possible. That kind of something. So, hmm, that's how I save costs by washing differently, doing it like that, wearing clothes differently. By rationing all my clothes. That is how I do it. I ration my clothes. <laughs> the tenth way I cut costs and, you know, save extra cash as an international student is by using student services. Hey, student services. So, for example, let me just explain what I mean. For example, uni days. Like, if you're a student in Europe, you should know about uni days. So, uni days is a student, um, student service platform where they get to, you know, partner with different firms and organizations to provide students with discounts anytime they want to buy anything. And so, you get there, you first of all get to register with your school school email address so they get to confirm it you know and all that so i registered with my glasgow students um, email address and so anytime i want to buy anything my first point of call is uni days i will go to uni days maybe after searching the things and i found the website i want to buy from i'll go to uni days and search for that company and then copy their promo code from there which would give me sometimes 10 percent discount and you know five percent twenty percent that kind of something I would copy it and then go to the website and continue, continue buying what I want to buy. At the point of checkout, I just input the promo code and then it will just give me student discount. For example, when I was buying my MacBook 13 inches Pro, is it? No, MacBook Pro 13 inches. <laughs> it was through Unidays and I got about 200 pounds. I got about, yeah, 200 pounds discount from it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> So I got about 200 pounds discount for me because I was a student and I had a uni days account. I got about that amount. Is that not good? The 11th way I cut costs and save myself some extra money as an international student mm -hmm. is by not buying anything on credit. Hmm. So let me explain well. I have seen different places they are going to tell you maybe you want to buy an iphone and then they will tell you you know you have to just put down a uh, 30 pound or whatever and then every month they'll be collecting 60 pounds or 30 pounds from you that kind of something they'll just be collecting it like that but then you've gone with the phone and you're using the phone and every month they'll be collecting that amount until you finish paying the money for me after calculating it I've looked at it, how much does this particular brand, this particular version of iPhone, how much does it cost? Let's say it costs 600. Those people that will tell you that you should collect it and be paying 60 pounds every month. At the end of the day, if that iPhone's original price is 600 pounds, at the end of the day, you're going to pay like 800 pounds. I'm like, mm -mm, I can't do that. That is like extra, my extra 200 pounds. I cannot do it. I'm going to use this, my phone. Yes, I'm going to use it until I save the exact money and go and buy it. I can't be, you can't come and be taking me, taking extra 200 pounds from me. And hallelujah, it's been working. I'm not complaining. Yes, so that's how I try to save money as an international student. <laughs> I 
at least eh, 200 pounds is something. Another way I save money and cut costs as an international student is by doing transfers only when it's extremely necessary and only when I have, let's say, a bulk money to transfer. Hmm. Let me explain. Here, like in some of the, for some bank accounts or for some banks, for whatever reason, they charge you to, you know, transfer money, even though it is the same country account, they, they charge you to transfer money, just like how we have in Nigeria. Especially GT Bank has just been taking my money anyhow. Like I'll do small transfer, they will collect money. They do, I'll do small transfer, they will collect money, that kind of stuff. So I don't get to transfer for my, you know, uh, euros and pounds. Account. I don't get to transfer money until I have something, a, a huge sum of, um, God, what am I saying? A huge sum to transfer. So it has to be a tangible money before I transfer, especially for my accounts. My if there's a particular account where they get to charge me for every transfer. So especially for that account, but the one they don't get to charge me, you know, I can just relax and be transferring. But the one they charge me, hmm, no, I am not doing that. Do you get? Because small, small money, it will just be accumulating. It will just be accumulating like that, and you're gonna go broke without you knowing, realizing. Hmm, and here. Every euro is count to every euro counts, like every euro count to every pound counts. So I take that really seriously. Finally, finally, oh, finally, finally, oh, the 13th way I save money and cut costs as an international student is by doing scale of preference, even on my needs. Do you get like, I have a lot of needs. They are not wants. I have filtered my wants. You get a filter them of kicked them to one corner, but I have a number of needs. Let's say, for example, as at December last year, I had loads of needs like loads of needs. I had need for a new laptop because the laptop I was using HP. Hmm. Oh god, I don't know the people that make this HP. The noise I will just own my laptop. The noise, Woo. if you see, it will not be removing commodity hot air, hot breeze, anyhow. Ha! If I bring a, and the laptop is so heavy, if I bring my laptop out like this, eh, other laptops is to bow. <laughs> if I have assignment to do, if I bring out my laptop, all other laptops, my colleagues, anytime I'm doing a group assignment, they to bow for me. <laughs> the noise, the heat, the, the weight of it, every single thing, like it was frustrating me as at last year, let's say uh, December last year. And at the same time, I, I'm still doing my YouTube and I needed a new phone, you know, maybe an iPhone 12 for my video quality and everything to take pictures and a whole lot of that. And also I needed a camera, like a better camera. Hmm. And all of them were not small money. The cheapest camera I've seen, uh, the cheapest and good quality camera I saw was about 600 pounds. iPhone is 1000 something. MacBook is 1000 something. These were all the things that I needed. I needed a new laptop. I needed a, a new phone. I needed, um, a, I needed a camera. But then I didn't have that luxury. I didn't have the money to, you know, purchase all these things. And what I decided to do was to put them on a scale of preference. I put it, I wrote down MacBook. I wrote it down. iPhone 12, I wrote it down. Uh, camera, I, I wrote it down. I put all the prices. I looked at all of them, all the prices and all that, and I saw that I could not afford them. But now, which one is the most important? They were all the things that I needed. I still need them. Which one is the most important? I put them on a scale of preference. And on my scale of preference, my laptop was number one. After my laptop was an iPhone, number two. After the iPhone was the camera that I needed. So these were three things I needed, but I did not have the money and the time to purchase it at that particular point in time. And so I decided after putting it on the scale of preference, my laptop came first. And so I invested my money into buying my laptop because I need it for my schoolwork. I need it for a whole lot of things that I invested it and I bought my laptop. And then I decided to spread the iPhone and the camera across the year. So my phone, my MacBook arrived in January. And so I spread the purchase of my phone and the purchase of a camera throughout this 2021. Let's see how it would go. So since after buying my MacBook, I decided to start saving, you know, start saving. So because 
I need to buy an iPhone. I need to buy an iPhone for good camera, for good picture quality and all that. Maybe, or maybe any other phone, maybe Samsung or something like that. But I need a phone that has good camera quality. And so I started saving and, you know, I'll be saving until that particular time when I have put for me to buy the, that particular time when I have put for me to buy the iPhone, I would buy it and then spread it across just like that throughout i've also spread my you know for me to be saving 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 until the time gets for me to purchase um my camera i would also save until then so now saving you know cutting costs and saving myself extra money as an international student by by doing scale of preference it's been really important with that i get to prioritize the things my needs i get to prioritize my needs at every point in time you know spread it across at every point in time i know the particular need i need to invest in i don't just have to because they are all my needs i now say i want to put all in or put in all my money if i do that i'm gonna go broke and i'm gonna be begging i don't have strength to beg anybody for money i don't have father here i don't have mother here so i need to use my number six very important Thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please before you leave, ensure to click the subscribe button down below to support your girl and you know, give this video a thumbs up if you love this video. Once again, if you've not seen the part one of this video, you need to go straight and see the part one of this video. I'll be linking it in the description box down below and up here, here, the notification up, up. I'm going to be linking it there. Thank you guys and I hope you have a great Easter.